Hello, Fearless Gamers! Matt here for Fearless Games, and today I'm going to be doing a fairly interesting video that, at least in my opinion, about how to take pictures of miniatures. Now it seems going to be a little weird, odd, me giving a video about this, especially since I'm not the greatest picture taker out there. I'm better with a film camera than I am with a um, picture camera. And But I've actually found this neat article on the Games Workshop website that was back a while ago when they announced that um, they want pictures of miniatures from players, from gamers, so they can, you know, either put them on the website or even maybe feature them in the um, White Dwarfs um, later on. And so they post this little article on how they take photographs. So the guy that does the photos for the um, White Dwarf said, this is how I do it. And I took um, the, the advice given off this, and I've noticed a major difference in my picture taking skills. So we go here and bam. That's the original picture of the Matthias, the Librarian and Terminator armor for my Legends of War Army of Dark Angels. And then there's this one, using the steps that he showed us in the um, article. And you can see already a dramatic difference in the picture quality. The colors are a lot sharper, more of him is in focus, and he just overall has a nice, a better picture view to him. Now, the interesting thing with this was it was taken with a crummy camera, to be perfectly honest. This is the camera that I'm using. It's a Kodak camera, which really says something since it's basically taking a picture with a camera made by a camera company that went out of business, well, that stopped making cameras because their cameras weren't selling because their cameras just were terrible. So even with a really crummy camera like this, you can get take per really decent pictures. And if you're someone who's like, oh, well, I need a camera, um, and you're not really big into photography, to be honest, I'd go look at the clearance stuff because that's where I did with this one. I just grabbed it because it was on clearance. And you tend to get a really good deal because you don't need this super awesome photography camera in order to take pictures. You don't even need that high of a megapixel because the whole megapixel thing is a really big, you know, in essence, as you could say, it's probably the biggest con job the camera companies have ever done with megapixels, in, but that's a whole different ar um, argument altogether. And now I'm going to warn you guys, I may use wrong definitions or descriptions of terminology in photography. Again, I'm less of the, I'm more of the just go ahead and, um, and do um, aspect. I'm not really good with the whole, you know, terminology and definitions and such, so if I do say something wrong, um, feel free to correct me in the comments. Just, you know, be polite about it. And we'll, and so let us go on with that. First, let's talk about what you're going to need. Obviously, you're going to need camera. And like I said, um, if anyone is curious, this one's a 10 megapixel camera. So if I really want, I can do like 10 by size, um, 8 by 10 size prints if I'm correct, you know, I'm, something like that. And the only other thing you would need is a white piece of paper. Um, I just grabbed paper from my printer and I fold it in half. You know, I just fold a little bit of it so it makes a little book shape. And then I prop something behind it to hold it up. Um, and that's really all you need for that. The only, then, then there's um, two other things that you're gonna need. One is gonna be a lamp. And when I mean lamp, I mean just a plain desk lamp. I got this from Target for about 10 bucks, and no, it's nothing really fancy or anything. The only thing that I would recommend is, is if you get if whatever lamp you get, have it where you can position the head wherever you need it to go. That way, you can get the light just right, and it will help with eliminating shadows being cast on your background. And the only other thing you would need is a light bulb, and the light bulbs that you need are daylight light bulbs. And there, there's going to be a bunch of light bulbs that you that you see out there. You know, there's soft light, um, there's there's um, um, white light, um, ultra bright. And the one that you're looking for is daylight. These I didn't find the Target. I found these at a local Home Depot that was right next door to the Target. And it's, this is fairly cheap. This is about five dollars and change, which isn't too bad for a four pack. And you just need to make sure that the lights are equivalent to your maximum wattage on your lamp. They, for this lamp that I've got, it was 60 watts, which so far 
hasn't been that big of a deal that's only 60 watts and I don't think you really need more than 60 watts. In fact, even in the article that I read this from, they didn't even specify the wattage, so I would say that that means that wattage doesn't really matter in this, in this um, thing. And you're also going to need a tripod. Now, if a tripod is not available, you can always work with just a stack of books or the, the sta I use sometimes the base of the lamp or it's just something to keep the camera steady. And now with your camera, what you're going to need is you're going to need to find the manual setting on your camera. This is so we can control all the aspects of the camera and the camera does what we want it to rather than the camera just deciding what it wants to do in terms of its settings. And most cameras tend to have these. I've yet to find a camera that does not have a manual setting. And there's going to be three things that we're going to be looking at. Technically four. The article doesn't mention this, but I have discovered, at least for my camera, that it is a big deal. Now, if your camera has it, like on this camera, it has a button for close-ups. Um, it's right there. If your camera has that, set it. The reason for that is, is um, with the, without the um, without the close-up button set on this, when I take the pictures, I can't zoom in and focus on an object. But if I have, if I have, so like right now, I'm use I, the close-up is turned off, and I've got, and the camera's warning me that there, you know, it's nothing's really in focus on this on the um, picture. Now I've set up the um, picture itself and now it is focused. It has it's focused the center object and the thing because that's what I set this to. So that's an important piece. Um, that could be uh, that could be bad for the um, for the picture but in my experience with this camera at least you know because every camera is different in my experience if I get the little red AF on the picture then the f then it is garbage looking the pictures. So, but again, every camera is different on that front. And what you're wanting, then, so moving on, one thing that we're going to first suggest is, is the f-stop. The f-stop basically, from my understanding how it's been explained to me, is think of it the controlling the eye of the lens camera. The it the f-stop controls how wide it is to allow more light in and how close it is to block out light from being exposed onto the lens. We want this number to be as high as possible. With this camera, it's a maximum of eight. And you want that to be as high as you can get it, so it gets the eye really wide and allows in the most light possible. But when we take a snapshot with this, you're gonna notice that the um, picture is uh, dark and blue. The darkness is primarily because of the shutter speed. What we want with this is, is we want the shutter speed to be um, set so the camera um, has a longer shutter speed. And what that does is, is basically the door that keeps the lens covered, the higher, the mo and it opens up and then closes. If, and the, if we up it to one tenth of a second, the shutter stays open longer. And if you go too high, over, I've noticed anything over one tenth of a second, the shutter stays open too long, and then the model seems to just bleed into the background because the white just overtakes it. But if you leave it, but if you let the shutter stay open for too short, then you get this dark bluish look. Now you may notice that on your pictures that there's probably a blue, a still a slight blue tint to the, your pictures. And that's probably going to be because of the white balance. White balance is essentially telling the camera what white lighting you're using, so what colors look like. So it basically gives it so in the time you really notice this effect is on um, white on backgrounds. If you know if your white balance isn't set properly, like in the original photo, it wasn't set properly, so we got this yellowish look. So the white in the picture was turned to this yellow type of color, and that altered and that affected the colors of all the other colors in the picture. Now with the new picture, what I did was is I set it to daylight which um, has worked out well for me, but some cameras have, you know, have their different, their white balances set a little bit differently. And so you may have to play around with that feature as well. 
Now, when I noticed with me, when I was taking pictures, even after doing those three steps, the pictures still weren't coming out right. They seemed very overexposed to me. And I discovered that what helps with fixing this is, is the ISO. The ISO basically controls how sensitive the camera is to light. So, you know, so it usually tends to be used a lot of time for nighttime picture taking because there's less light so the camera needs to be super sensitive to whatever light is around, but it also kind of tends to make the pictures look a little grainy. And in this case, because of our setup, we, you know, it's getting over sensitive to light and so it's affecting the picture. So I dropped down my ISO down to 100 and the picture quality difference was night and day. And from there, the other thing that you're going to need is, is to set the timer and, dis and disable the flash. The, since you have the lamp on the model already, you don't need the flash. Do you want the timer set because the one issue with just snapping the picture is this. You know, this motion. As you notice, the camera slightly moves. I'm over-exaggerating the motion, but the camera does move slightly when you take a picture. This one reason why tripod is good, but the other thing is, is you should set the timer. Um, the the guy from Games Workshop says he sets his to ten. I set mine to two because you just need enough time for the camera to recover from you snapping the shot, and that'll also help with you know, and that's going to help eliminate the blur from the uh, model that you're getting. And with those simple steps, you'll notice a dramatic difference in your picture taking of your models. So, just a quick rundown of the list. You want a white piece of paper for a background, a desk lamp with a daylight light bulb in it, your camera you want to set to your manual setting, you, you, you would want to adjust your f-stop to or your aperture to at least to the highest point that it can go. Um, like I said, on my camera it was eight and eight seems to be producing a very nice picture. Um, I haven't, it, since I haven't changed my camera, I don't know if change, if a higher number would make that better. You also want to control the white balance of the camera. You want to, you, that you're going to have to play with because, you know, it can be different, but I would first immediately try daylight since the light bulb you have is, simu is pseudo simulating daylight. You also want to change the shutter speed to one tenth of a second. And if you're still having issues, play with the ISO. And like I said, for my camera, the magic number was 100. And you will also, and just to keep note, you want your camera on a tripod, and you want to use the timer on your camera, and you want to make sure that the flash is disabled. That is all for taking pictures of miniatures. Again, if I did say, if I did any of the, if I gave any misinformation about what the terminology I used was, please feel free to correct me. And if you have any other tips out there that you want to give out, you know, the, oh, you know, you could do this better or a particular camera that um, you would recommend for taking pictures like this, feel free because um, I'd be also very interested because I am in the market for a new camera and I'm just waiting to find, you know, a decent brand, decent camera, then a really good price. Probably, like I said before, wait for it to go on clearance. So that is all for right now. Thank you all for watching. And until next time, fearless gamers, take care.